Good morning. Thank you very much uh, for giving me an opportunity to make my comments. Uh, it's related to national trade policy. My name is Kamini Gunasekara. Um, I'm a chemical engineer and also I'm a lawyer. Uh, I had opportunity to work with uh, well, number one, multinationals, uh, the biggest chemical manufacturing companies in the world, uh, Dow International and Union Carbide. Presently, I am Managing Director, Union Chemicals, Lanka PLC, former Union Carbide, uh, Lanka Limited. Uh, I will, I have uh, five, six areas. I will go through the briefly. And if you have any question, you can ask, right? Mm, number one, we have to establish um, regulatory framework before we are going for trade policy. For example, anti-dumping regulation. We, I think 2006, uh, we uh, forwarded uh, anti-dumping bill to the parliament. Up to now, after 11 years, nothing has been happened. This I just questioned one of the minister who was handling. He said, no, no, we have passed the anti-dumping regulation. Then his secretary said, no, no, sir. Still, it's not there. After 11 years, now it is, I think, recently. Last week, I had another meeting with one of the deputy minister. They said it is with the uh, economic subcommittee, cabinet ministers, right? I will take it up with the other institutions also. Like, uh, this is trade-related in institution, export development board, uh, uh, the department of commerce. Um, uh, Import Control Department, Ministry of Industries, uh, these organizations are not here to handle the, you know, when you open the market, these organizations are not ready. Especially Sri Lanka Standard and also Accreditation Board, right? Because there is a huge issue on the testing and certificate issuing, right? Now, when you export Japanese product to U.S., there is no problem. All the authorities are accredited and uh, international standard, they are issue, right? But you go to SLIZ, are, are, these standards are not there. People are not trained, right? Now, this... Uh, so we need to set up these organizations. I give, I take you a good example. In 1998, April, we signed uh, in the Sri Lanka pre trade agreement and it was implemented in 2000, January, right? Immediately after, fund management team in Dubai, they, I think you must be heard about this, 17 Vanaspati oil factories were here set up, right? 17, all these owners are Dubai fund management Indians, they are, they are actually established in Dubai, right? They studied these pre-trade agreements, they see what they can get. Right, 17 factories were here. Then the 300 percent duty from here to anybody importing Vanaspati oil to India, that is 300 percent duty. But this product was in positive list, so they used that provisions and they exported to India. Right, Indian ex they had the 70 factories, they these guys are very smart, they took up their, their ministry, they immediately reduced to 70. Now, after that, 30 they had. Uh, state taxes. These guys within five years they made the money, they closed down the factory overnight, they left. Still they have, they have to settle the, all the you know loans they have taken from the banks, those are not settled. Right. Now this is what's happened, our organization, institutions are not organized, right? Actually 2000 I am manufacturing polymer emulsion, right? And also trading. We sent a sample to 2000, uh, we had um, uh, provisions in the Act, uh, sorry, agreement, sample we sent to India, this was tested by the, uh, the paint manufacturer, he said, okay, give you a bulk uh, batch. We sent one metric ton, that was in uh, Indian port, Mumbai, this custom say, we don't know about this pre-trade agreement, they were not educated, after two years, but I was trying to talk to director of commerce, for three months, I didn't, I couldn't get this. I was the cha vice chairman in the Chamber of Industries. He didn't give, he didn't want to listen. But India is the other way, right? This, our people are behaving. After three months, they released that uh, one metric ton. Then the customer said, sorry, uh, we have no interest at all now. That is our business, how our people are treated, right? There are so many things you would have heard about the, you know, non-tariff barriers, right? So, number two, <coughs> the area, SMEs. Um, Says now, 
our 90% of industrial establishments are SMEs in this country, right? That contribute to an average 26% of employment. Out of this ninth, uh, say, uh, this one is about 90%. Uh, 90% business uh, now when you take the industries 90% industries are SMEs only 10% it may be a medium large extra large categories so you can understand how our SMEs right now the my, my company actually it was a multinational company Union Carbide so we had 30 years war they said they were not interested later because I joined as a process control engineer and then the operation engineer I was involved in designing and ma uh, factory manager general manager managing director later they sold me this company is a good example is a multinational everybody thought how you are going to develop better product than multinationals because our center was in Singapore you send just email R&D everything all PhD guys are there but today our company is 100 times better than the multinationals our CI is 13 rupees today 600 rupees I think you can see that our final dividend is 11 rupees second right interim dividend 9 rupees that means 20 rupees for 10 rupees par value right so because we need the people chemistry special graduate equipments and the relationship we are doing better than because multinational I think I can remember madam asked the question so multinational have the opportunity to central purchasing system all the multinationals they negotiate for the, all the factories in the, the world right the one supply they have at least per metric ton 200 to 300 dollars difference we get in the bar, container 80 drums 200 kiloliters of chemical in the drum they get it 120,000 shipment and pump from there to the storage tanks right 300 dollars difference per metric ton so that advantage is there for the multinationals right so we have to think about the SMEs because this system right now see these pre-trade agreements are coming and signed right if you because these guys are they are contributing 53 percent of GDP they are provided by the SMEs right so SME will be disappeared from our country next is now uh, our I think our, our per capita income is something like 388 US dollars per annum but it has come down to 380 Sorry, 3,800, but uh, probably 2,070 it will be 4,000 US dollars. Uh, and our aim is we are politicians are talking about the 2020 we will achieve 7,000 US dollars per capita. So now we are lower middle income country. So the most of the countries when they achieve this 4,000 uh, figure, they will get caught to uh, this uh, middle income trap, right? Yes, the, if you go out of this. You have to increase the export. So you need, you should have the products to increase the export. Otherwise, you will get caught to low income, low wages countries. They have the products like ready-made garments. And also get caught to high income, high technology countries. They are product, high tech products. We don't have both. It's going, the way it's moving, we had about 390,000 employees about last year, beginning of the last year in uh, garment sector. Today it came down to 320,000. Even the tea industry also same. Our tea, I think 300 million kilos we manufactured in um, 2000 is still three, uh, three, not even um, 3 million uh, uh, kilos because no people, right? Can you go for high tech products? We are still depend on traditional product, tea double covenant and ready-made garments, right? Ready-made garment trade is 7.5 billion. We import 3.5 billion worth of material. Export maybe 4.4 4 billion US dollars. Ultimately, net value is 0.5 billion, right? With little less than 4.5 billion. That also not growing. And other thing is high-tech products. Our research and development expenditure is 0.16.15 percent of our uh, GDP 0.15 percent our uh, export high-tech products export is 1.5 percent of total export whereas South Korea they export 75 percent of their GDP high-tech products Thailand 27 percent Malaysia 50 percent right 
Sri Lanka 1.5 early I think last uh, 2015 it is 1.6 today this year last year it came down to 1.6 percent around 1.6 percent our expense is a 0.16 percent of our GDP even our neighboring country India spend 1 percent of GDP for R&D South Korea 4 percent Singapore 4 percent of GDP for R&D right Unfortunately, the sad situation is this is 0.16 percent. Only private sector spending 18 percent, right? 18 percent private sector. But the developed countries 65 more than 65 percent from private sector. We seek, we talk about the private sector is the engine of the growth. We are 0.16 percent. Point one out of that say total that is only 18 percent private sector say balance is the government sector right this is we have to consider all these factors we do, do we have a products to offer you are going to open the economy do we have products to offer the offer to the uh, global uh, for global trading right so next is labor regulations we have a whole life of labor regulation to all these 19, 1940s labor regulation is from, from the, the British time. Even British, UK is designed, designed from this labor regulation. They have new labor regulation. They have labor regulation not uh, tally, you know, not uh, suit for the, the current economic scenario, world scenario, right? The other thing very important, China-Sri Lanka free trade agreement. Now, I listened to the, the head of our, our negotiation committee, right? I, I don't want to mention the name. China has signed 14 free trade agreements, right? What they said, they want to have the same system here. Say, reduced to, now positive list is around 40.15. Sorry, um, negative list. We have, you know, negative and positive list. Uh, 40.15 percent product lines are in negative list the balance is 59 percent is uh, positive list China said we have to reduce your positive uh, negative list to 10 percent right this is how they uh, propose now we have 59 percent out of 59 percent six percent product line seven um, duty Balance 3% out of this 59, 3 percent says that the, we have been protected, our products have been protected. Now, within 20 years period, starting after completing 10 years, during the 10 years period, make the duty free list to 59% to 65%. Right? It is just before one month ago, complete before completing 10 years, if you can make it to 65%, that is agreed. Right? After that, 10th year to 14th year, 65 percent to 80 percent. 15th year to 18, uh, 18th year, 80 percent to 85 percent. 18th year to 19th year, 85 percent should be 90 percent. Right? This is how they want. Actually, why why I am asking? This is the offer. This is a negotiation table. Our industries they agreed. Okay, now 40 percent. But we say at least 30 percent. Keep it 30 percent. We are not negotiation here. It's a one-way traffic. What they said, we are going to accept, right? Our people should negotiate, right? Another thing, uh, tariff protection right now. We have to see that our, I have the list, uh, this, uh, most of the industries in Sri Lanka. Say sweet biscuit, 30% duty, and also 35% to 65% or uh, oh, 100 rupees a kilo. Duty and says both are there. Beverage, 40 rupees a liter, and plus says 50%. Paints, 30% duty, 80 rupees a kilo. This duty and says both. There are a lot of product, glues, cosmetic, right? Yeah, this we are going to submit, right? But I tell you, take it out. This make it the says and duty zero. Because 10% is only agricultural products, right? We cover up 10% is finished. No industrial products can be covered. So almost 95% of our industries we have to close down. Probably our people have to go and work 
at Ham Vantutta for the Chinese, right? I am sure we will not generate, there won't be any, any provisions to crop up uh, Sri Lankan entrepreneurs, it will be Chinese and Indian entrepreneurs, right? And But even I just want to mention the protect, they talk about the protectionism. I don't know whether you know, last 10 years under Mr. Obama's, uh, during his regime, 62,000 industries, factories were closed down in USA. It's not like uh, Ginasena, DSI and this is why it was more than 10, 15 times bigger than these factories here just because of Chinese product. That's why he wants to, you know, introduce 45% duty or the protection against Chinese product. 10%, right? All the countries are like that. We talk about, we are open. Now I give you some Bangladesh, cosmetic product, you import to Bangladesh, 129% duty. South Africa, cables, our cables manufacturer, we have two companies. They are exporting to South Africa. They, they are subject to the 50%. Their margin is about 5%, 6% because they said still they are making good money. They, when they negotiate the raw material, they can negotiate for the big quantity. Because of that, they can sell at even 5.6 percent, 5 or 6 percent margin, and they have a better margin here in Sri Lanka because their product is protected, right? They can set off, right? Now, India solid tires. I mentioned that we have, you know, we are the biggest solid. So, ten factories are here, biggest solid manufacturer in the world. The, our big brother is 29.5 percent. We are exporting to 45 countries. Mexico 15 percent. All other countries 5 percent. Solid tires. This is, we are the biggest manufacturer in the world. Thank you very much, sir. But in uh, India, our big brother, so-called big brother is 29.5%, right? We asked from 2000 to 2016, we wrote to Director Commerce, why didn't you attend this? No, no response even. Thank you, Thank you very much.